The second half of the 90s gave us a huge number of young actors. The reason for this is quite simple. In 1996 the movie Scream reanimated the teenage slasher genre. And since different maniacs were chopping up teenagers in packs, therefore it required a greater number of actors. Many young talents could not get out of and become stars because of the great competition, but there were actors who managed to do it. About the career of one such actress I would like to remember today. Jennifer Love Hewitt began to show her talent in childhood. Since school she singing and successfully performed at various concerts. At age nine, Jennifer and her mother moved to Los Angeles, where she had already begun her acting career. Initially she got small roles in movies and TV series. The movies were small and were released immediately on video or television. In those years, without a movie and box office was impossible to enroll in the category of popular actors, and here Jennifer was lucky. Not bad in cinemas performed the movie House Arrest. A family comedy is not called Big Hit, but the actress has a real movie in her portfolio. This already gave the ticket to a higher level and Hewitt began to storm Hollywood. As I said, in those years young actors were in demand because of the growing popularity of slashers. Before Scream, it was a dead genre, because studios were squeezing everything out of their franchises and because of the self-repeating the genre died. Until Kevin Williamson showed up in Hollywood with his screenplay for Scream. Initially, no one wanted to mess with the script until Wes Craven became interested in the project. Craven is rightly considered the father founder of the slasher genre. In the 70s he directed the original The Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes and afterwards he worked on the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. It was because of him that the script was taken by Dimension Films and the studio was not mistaken. The film was a big hit and took in 103 million on a budget of 14. The screenwriter Kevin Williamson immediately became a welcome man in any Hollywood studio and his script I Know What You Did Last Summer was immediately bought by Sony for $1 million. It's funny, but Kevin wrote the script for this movie before Scream. But no one was interested in it at the time. The film was launched quickly, and the producers began to look for young actors for major roles. At this point, Jennifer Love Hewitt walked by the studio and was invited to audition. The studio originally saw Melissa Joan Hart in the lead role, but Hart turned it down because the film looked like a copy of Scream. Hewitt was unaware of her decision, but Sarah Michelle Gellar already knew that Hart had turned it down and came to the audition with the intention of replacing her. Gellar and Hewitt auditioned together and the producers did not like them both at all. According to rumors, one of the producers offered the actresses to swap roles, and after the retrial, both immediately signed. With the cast, which would later be called one of the best in the history of slashers, the producer in general was very lucky. Ryan Philippi was also not supposed to film. The actor really wanted to be in the movie, but did not fit the role. The character, which he would later play all the same, was supposed to be football player with the appropriate size. But since Dwayne Johnson in those years is not interested in acting career, the producers were not suited by anyone. And in the end, the director offered to bring back Philippi, who really wanted to play in the film and rewrite the character for him. At the box office, I Know What You Did Last Summer, took $125 million on a budget of 17. All the actors woke up famous. It would seem that in front of actors will open all doors, but Hewitt has shown a very strange approach to the choice of roles. Maybe this was the fault of the actress agent who did not see much potential in her, or may be affected by the inexperience of the actress, at that time she was only 19 years old. In general, immediately after the success of the slasher, she signed on for the movie Trojan War. If it had been a different movie about Troy with Brad Pitt, then the career of an actress might have turned out very differently. But Trojan War is a vulgar teen comedy, with all the consequences that entails. The film is known for the fact that the reviews at test screenings were so awful that the studio released the film only in one theater. The film took in $300, after which it was quickly sent to video. Without thinking long, Jennifer signed on for another comedy, telling you. Compared with Trojan War, 
it was almost a blockbuster. At the box office, it grossed as much as $3,000. Following two such powerful films, Jennifer was a bit lucky, although she again starred in the teen comedy Can't Hardly Wait. With a budget of $10 million, the film took in $25 million at the box office and has quite good ratings for the genre. And Love Hewitt was nominated for it at the MTV Movie Awards. It was followed by a sequel, I Know What You Did Last Summer, which got a very original title, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. The film was not a flop, but the American box office dropped from $70 million to $40 million and that with a significantly increased budget. Critics and audiences trashed the film, so the threequel was released immediately on video with other actors. It should be noted here that all four of these films came out in one year. That is, the actress managed to star in three failed films in one year. It's surprising that her career didn't end right there. Although the blow to her this list of masterpieces clearly hurt, but the choice of roles she was not more careful. The next work of the actress The Suburbans again took a giant box office of $11,000 and received a low rating from the audience. Here was Hewitt's first attempt to gain a foothold on television. This attempt was the series' time of your life. Scores he had a little better than the standard rate of the actress, but it did not help. The series was closed after the first season. Apparently noticing that the career drifts to nowhere, Jennifer tried to choose roles a little more carefully. Thus came the Audrey Hepburn story. The film missed wide distribution, but American critics noticed the actress in it and again went over her talent. Viewers did not like this view of Hepburn. The film was scolded for its excessive vulgarity. The actress was a bit lucky in the next stage of her career. For the film Heartbreakers Jennifer got the biggest fee of her career, $4 million. Such an impressive fee she got because the project was ready to collapse and producers urgently needed more or less well-known actress in one of the two main roles. The movie was a Hollywood long shot. Originally, the creators of the comedy wanted to see Cher and Jennifer Aniston in the lead roles, but Aniston's career was gaining momentum and she left for other projects. The main work on the film began in 1997. Alicia Silverstone and Glenn Close were confirmed for the leading roles, and Doug Lehman, who had already directed Swingers, was to direct the movie and would later take on the adventures of Jason Bourne and Edge of Tomorrow. Just before shooting Silverstone, due to creative differences, dropped out of the movie and in her place called Sarah Michelle Gellar, but the actress refused to pick up the role that no one wanted, and referring to the busyness refused. After that, Doug Lehman and Glenn Close left the project. The film began to fall apart, but since a lot of money had already been invested in preparation for filming, studio did not cancel the film and the producers quickly signed Sigourney Weaver. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Gene Hackman and Ray Liotta. The actors were lured with increased royalties and since there was no money left for a director the production was entrusted to Simpson screenwriter David Merkin. Hewitt also increased the film's budget with just one scene. It was the scene at the end of the movie where Jennifer Love Hewitt is outside the car talking to Ray Liotta. It was cold on the set, and the actress wrapped a white sweater around her waist, which got into the frame after which it had to be removed from the screen by computer technology. At the box office, the film failed. At 35 million budget, box office receipts were only 57 million. American audiences did not like the film, but in the rest of the world, the comedy has pleased the audience. If the film had such a response in the United States, it would obviously have had a positive impact on Jennifer's career but the bad luck of the actress only worsened. Heartbreakers was followed by Tuxedo, in which the actress starred alongside Jackie Chan, who in those years was at the peak of his American popularity. Despite this, the film at a budget of $60 million grossed only $104 million at the worldwide box office and got some bad reviews. In 2004, the actress had one box office success with the movie Garfield, but it is generally believed that such films just go to the actors who have some kind of career problems. In 2005, the actress had already met on television. There, the show Ghost Whisperer ran for five seasons. While she was starring in the show in theaters arrived various projects, 
in which she starred back in the early noughties. So in 2007, Shortcut to Happiness directed by Alec Baldwin finally made it to the big screens. The film went through production hell and bankruptcy of the studio after which it was bought by Bob Yari Productions and released six years after the end of filming. Alec Baldwin said that when the film fell into the hands of the new company, it was re-edited so that it no longer resembled the original film at all, nor the story by American science fiction writer Stephen Vincent Benet, which was the basis of the script. Baldwin even demanded that his name be removed from the film credits, where he worked as director, producer and actor. After Ghost Whisperer was shut down due to poor ratings, Love Hewitt began to be flashed in many television projects in the second and third roles. One such project was the TV movie Client List, for which the actress received a Golden Globe nomination. A couple years later, Jennifer launched a TV series based on the film, where she was in the title role. The show lasted on small screens for two seasons. The series did quite well with ratings and was shut down due to a disagreement between the producers and Love Hewitt. Jennifer wanted to expand the role of Brian Hallisey, who as also was Hewitt's husband. The producers did not want to do that and Hewitt left the project. Now Love Hewitt shoots much less frequently and is mainly engaged in family. Of the current projects, she can be seen in the TV series 911 and any other films as absent in her plans. It is also worth mentioning about the musical career of the actress. She has recorded several successful albums. Some of her songs were on the soundtrack of the movies in which she starred. Her last albums were not as successful in the US and although they received a lot of popularity in Australia and Japan, Hewitt also ended her singing career in 2006. It's too bad that a series of bad choices for roles and failures at the box office of really good movies undermined the career. Hewitt had every opportunity and talent to become a star. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Thank you for listening. Subscribe and stay tuned.